the calendar and sparse activities. But I trust God as we finish out this child raising season that he has something to leave us. The youth department has a tagline that states, move the mission. Can you say that together? Move the mission. I would like to focus on that thought and call this small session, Mind the Mission. Can we say, Mind the Mission? A mission is an important assignment carried out for political, religious, or commercial purposes. A task that is regarded as very important and important duty. To mind means to regard as important, feel concerned about, take care or be careful of, about something. To pay obedient heed or attention, to pay obedient heed and attention. This mission of family is worth minding. It is a very important duty and assignment that we need to regard as important and give great attention to. Raising godly children does not happen by default. It takes diligence. It takes perseverance. It is a daily act of diligence to point our little ones to an almighty loving God. Psalm 127.3 says, Woe, children, are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. This mission is one of the greatest missions you will ever be a part of. It's designed by God, and, give, and, has, and God has given us instruction to carry out through his word. I want to subtitle this mission, Due Diligence. Hebrews 6, 11 and 12 says, And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them that through faith and patience inherit the promises. This duty and um, position of being alive is going to take patience and faith. Can we say that together? Patience and faith. 2 Peter 1.10 says, Wherefore, the rather, brother, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Hebrews 11.6 and 7 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Noah had it right. He was obedient to God. He diligently followed instructions to build the ark and saved his family from destruction. I looked it up before we came in this morning. Noah was building his ark 55 to 75 years. That's a lifetime. A lifetime to protect his family. And so this race is not to us with this. I'm going to talk about a few things that we should be diligent in. Be diligent about loving God and sharing family devotions. Keep your Bible, your Bible storybooks, your object lessons, and your chalkboards at your fingertips. Daily seeking and reading about God with your family is a joy and blessing. And you can start that right away. I remember having our little people on our bed at night, all of them, as they even got bigger, we had the boys with their, you know, it, it was a party. <laughs> but it was our time at the end of the day to refocus and talk to one another, and to love one another. I would read, and my husband sometimes would be too tired to read, so I would read. And it was a wonderful way to close out the day. And so, in the morning, we also started our day with Jesus. We would need a short devotion. Don't keep it too long. Kids get bored. We're thinking about school. Keep it short to the point. Uh, make it relevant. You know, use a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something to, to keep it relevant and real. You want to show Jesus to them. Jesus is not someone that's far off, that you can't 
be close to you are Jesus to them as far as your actions and your attitudes. If you love on them and make them feel important, you are showing them Jesus every day. Be present. I know we live in a very busy world, but we owe it to our children to be present. They are the greatest gift that you will ever receive beside the Holy Spirit. They are precious. They are a treasure. So be present. I know your calendars get busy here, going there, and everywhere. But if you're too busy for your kids, you're too busy. They need you. Um, morning and evening appointments with Jesus and each other were a family routine for us. God's Word is our foundation. Read the Bible. Memorize the Bible. Yes. And talk about the amazing story of God's Word. If you dig into the Word of God, some of the stories are incredible. I mean, you don't need to really go outside much of it. I mean, come on. You've got Samson. You've got Esther. You, you've got it all. It's here. It's, it's the best book that you can help them love and learn and read. When our children turned 16, I bought them each a Thompson Chain reference Bible. And it would help them to find things. Sometimes you're like, oh, where's this person? It's like, give them a Bible so they can find it on their own. You know, equip them to serve and love and walk with Jesus on their own. Because someday you're going to say goodbye. You know, all three of, all four of mine live in Indianapolis. They're on their own. And my one son still at home. But you want to equip them for when they leave, they can stand on their own two feet. When they go through a struggle, when they're feeling down, when they're feeling like they are heartbroken, you want them to know that I'm safe right here in the presence of God. I can be still and know that you are my Savior, Jesus. And so equip them to serve God on their own. Equip them to hear the voice of God. Samuel heard the voice of God at a young age. You know, the prophet. <laughs> Speak, Lord, thy servant. Go back to bed. I don't Next time, say, speak on my servant here. Help them to discern the voice of God. Our, old, our youngest son just recently was trying to decide where he was going to go to college, and he wanted to go into nursing. And we were like, all right, Ashley, that's a good career. We support you. And he did all the paperwork. He got accepted. He would, And he came home one day, and he just was not running. I said, Asher, um, are you okay? You know, what's, what's going on? I said, I just... I'm just not sure that this is what I'm supposed to do. And he was just troubled. And he's a boy, so he don't cry as much as us national girls. But I could tell that something wasn't right. And I said, well, let's just pray about this. And I said, God wants you to learn how to find in your own mind and spirit what is good for you. And so we prayed, and I said, well, what are our options? And we talked about it. And we took him to Urshan College and we visited the college and he felt much more comfortable with that decision at this point in his life. He said, well, maybe I'll do nursing later. And I said, nursing is a beautiful career. We need caregivers. But how do children recognize the voice of God? And sometimes it's work. Sometimes it's, it's pain to see. It's like I just, you know, sometimes I get, get the word out in the morning. I'm like, I just need a word from you today. Teach your children to to have that relationship and come out of their quiet time and say, God gave me a word. Listen, you know, my girls would call me and say, Mom, God gave me a word. And it's beautiful, but you have to teach them and create an atmosphere for them to hear the voice of God. You know, let their bedrooms be that quiet place or wherever my bedroom is my quiet place. Wherever you choose or wherever they choose, make their place clean and tiny where they can come and sit and be still and hear God's voice. Um, we're trying to get through the hiding place with Asher before he graduates. I have like three chapters left. We read out loud at night, even as they're old. He's going to be 18 and he'll lay his baby legs across our bed. And, oh, jeez. Can you go on the floor tonight? <laughs> but we're trying, you know, read out loud to them, connect them, give them people that they can look to and say, wow, she's got faith. I can have faith too. You know, Tori Tenboom, I don't know if you've read The Hiding Place. If you Tori reading. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's 
not, I mean, I have read that book. My, I have, my copy is just scattered. My kids are like, Mom, get a new copy. But it's so special because I have some things marked. You know, expose them to good reading material. Expose them to missionaries. People like Nona Freeman, Booker T. Washington, Glenn Siler, Betty Green, Eric Hill, who wasn't going to run on the Lord's Day. He had it right. You know, expose them to those people to build their faith. We are here as moms and dads to build their faith. We do not want them to lose their faith. And sometimes it might waver. But we are here to help them find that benchmark of faith in God and His Word. Psalm 63, 1 says, Oh God, thou art my God, freely will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in the dry and thirsty land where no water is. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. That word have I put in my heart that I might not see and see. Help them memorize it. Even your little people, and I know we probably have a lot of quizzers here too, so you memorize a word with quizzes. And those of you that are not in quizzing, give them, your little people can memorize scripture. Their minds are sharp. They're amazing minds. And so be diligent about the word of God and finding their quiet time with God. Second of all, be diligent about loving and serving each other and one another. Make those breakfasts in bed for the birthday celebration of each one of your little peoples. Tell them we love you. We celebrate you today. You are a gift from God. We are thankful for you. Serving family, serve family meals together and by all means eat together. You need that time as a family where you can cry together. Tell each other about what you're doing. It is vital. Make clear your calendar. Every night if you can, but if not, at least a couple nights a week and on Sundays. We lived in a little village of Iowa, and on Sundays we had to drive 20 minutes to find a restaurant. And we didn't have a lot of money, and so we generally ate our Sunday afternoon meal together at home. And it was the best of times. You know, we would make brunches, we would, it was a big time. I put the tablecloth on, and it was a big time. Because we're celebrating for one, God. It's God's day. For two, we're celebrating each other because we love one another. Eat together. Um, we are a team. Prefer your brother and sister. You don't always need to be first, and you don't always get the biggest piece of cake. <laughs> Prefer your brother and sister. Teach them that. You are, you are, you are my buddy. You know, you are, I love you, and that family camaraderie is beautiful. And the, the light of God shines brightest at home. If we can't love one another in our household, how are we going to love our neighbors and our people at church? This is the biggest training ground for your family to reach the world. I mean, if you're scrapping all the time, what kind of a witness is that? And so make an atmosphere of love and serving and sharing and giving and give the back rubs and give the foot massage. I mean, just love on them. God is love. We are, we are participating in, in God's plan of giving and loving and serving. And be, this is one of our favorite verses when they were getting a little owly with each other. And be kind one to another. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. That was one of my favorites. I'm sure it's one of yours too, Eliza. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Be those good Samaritans. Show your children just because that person doesn't look like you or doesn't have all the talents you need, that they're not special. Help them to understand the value of humanity. We are all valuable. And in our kingdom, in our churches, in our world, if you don't have this certain outfit or this whatever, we are all valuable. And Christ died for each one of us. And if you can help your children understand that, they will live a full, loving, godly life. 
Um, be diligent about your work. Daily chores make for a happy, productive family. Making your bed was the first chore of the day. How many of you have your kids make their beds? Let's do it, ladies. <laughs> mom Gannon and my mom make their beds. My best friend, Kristen, is her mom. I honor you today for supporting me and loving me this weekend. Make your beds. It's the first chore that's complete. When you get home at night, who wants to crawl in a messy bed? Not me. Have them make it. It doesn't take very long. In fact, get beds that they can make beds. Some of those the bunk beds are hard. I my boys had bunk beds, and it was and it was like it's so hard to make it up on top of the bed. You know it's hard to get it right. But he is my bed maker. You could eat dinner on his bed. The covers are straight. It looks fabulous. It's good discipline, and it makes them feel like their life is in order. And if they do want to go to their quiet place, it's a great place to retreat. Who wants to retreat to a messy bed? Not me. I appreciate holding those covers back. Putting the pillows in place, having clean sheets, and I tell my kids, I cleaned your sheets today. Oh, and they know that mom cares for them. And that it is important to take care of our own little personal spot. Because if they can take care of that, they can take care of mom when she's old, they can take care of the church. It starts right here, 101 home. Let's take care of our spot. Um some chores to do. They feel good about themselves when they accomplish chores. And as you work together as a family, you are building a team. And so when they're going out to the workforce, they're going to hire your kid like that. Our, all of our children have worked at college, all five of them. <laughs> and sometimes three at the same time. And they're like, how can you guys work together? And they're like, have you done this before? We have this. We come, we come in with their blue crew hat, and it's it's a, it's a big time. We and me and my husband will drop in on them and visit them and hang around. And sometimes they like that, sometimes they don't. <laughs> but I'm showing them that I think you're important, and I'm going to see what you do flipping hamburgers and why you got the burn on your arm. I'm letting them know that I appreciate them, and they're going to serve me a, a great hamburger. Asher will come and say, how was it ever, Mom? I'm like, it was beautiful. It was delicious. <laughs> He'll come out and ask me, you know, and I'm going to tell him. And affirm him what he's doing. He's serving. He's loving people. He's loving those that come through the line and helping them see Jesus. Um, For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thank you, Sister Elkie, for finding this verse for me this morning. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if only would anyone would not work, neither should you eat. Teach your children good work ethic. We are not slothful people. We are Christians and we are industrious. Have the girls learn to iron their clothes. My mother-in-law is the best iron lady ever. <laughs> I go down there and she's got this iron, it's got the cord in it, and she's amazing. And of course, then I'm going to be a good iron lady, because her son thinks that's what I should do too. <laughs> and he was in the military, and those green dungarees are really hard to iron. I'm like, could you just take them to the cleaners and let them do it, but it was a little too pricey. Teach your girls to iron. Find an outfit that doesn't, that needs ironing. Get a little spray starch and see, you know what? Beautiful. It's good for them to learn to care for their clothes. Um, be diligent about your worship. Every Sunday is set aside to worship God collectively. It's God's day. We clear our calendar and we are present. And I know our schedules get busy and kids get involved in school things. And it's so tempting to say, well, our children very rarely miss the Sunday service. Probably I could go on one hand for it. It was a school thing. But Sunday is God's day. And so are Wednesday nights. You do need a midweek pick-me-up. 
but don't allow them to put other things ahead of serving and loving, collectively worshiping Jesus. Church is important. We love God. We love His sanctuary. Um, we serve in our local assembly. We give of our time and our talent and our treasure. Involve them in the work of God. Involve your, them in teaching Sunday school, taking up the offering. My middle son loved back in the church. He loved it. He, he'd say, he, after he left, I miss back in the church. You know, they're caring, they're loving God's place of worship. Include them in it. Don't you do everything. Take them, give them a little chore at church and let them be involved in whatever. Ten minutes. Thank you so much. Um, Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thy honor dwell. Help them to love God's house. It's a place of safety. It's a place of order. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Number five, be diligent in giving. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus was our greatest example of diligent giving. He gave everything, including his life. Giving is more than 10% of your increase. And I believe in giving in our tithe and offering. I still have some envelopes. When we left by we got rid of our seven years of records and I had little envelopes that said 10 cents. They could barely write their name. And I said, can I take these with me? You know, they write their name on it. They got 10 cents for a dollar they received working for the neighbor. Or one dollar from grandma's $10 she sent at the birthday card. Those are little things, but you surely want them to be tithing when they're making a big money. Because our church survives on those college tithe checks. <laughs> it's those little things, and they love it. The Bible says God loves a check. Make it a big deal. I'm giving, you know, I'll have my little coin thing set up. Oh, that's for my Sunday school offering. And I bring my little coins and whatever. Giving is wonderful. Yeah. And so, Teach them to give to God's kingdom. It's the greatest kingdom you can give to. Um, because life is about other. A little song that we used to sing when I was a little girl. What can I give Jesus? I want to do my part. What can I give Jesus? The love of all my heart. My hands, my feet, my money too. My praises and my song. I give them all to Jesus, for all to him belong. Whosoever shall seek his life shall lose him, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve him. For whosoever will save his life shall lose him, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, and the gospel's sake, the same shall save him. This is not mission impossible. You can raise a God. God has equipped us. He's given us his word. He's given us these wonderful sessions where we can learn from things he's doing over in, for investing in the everyday life, because that's really where it all comes in. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Stick to the task. We're on year 28. We're striving. Oh, it's worth the sacrifice. I mean, I don't have a lot in my bank account. And I really don't care because I know that God is going to take care of me. Because right. I took care of the mission. Right. This is a mission. Look at it. It's just, this is what I do. This is clear your calendar from other things that try to invade your family. And, and there is a great attack on families. Or they're, we're not sure who, who is what. It, you know, you got it solidified. And it's worth the investment because when you're older, if you've taken care of business, you won't have to worry as much. I mean, I can go to bed at night and, and know that they're hopefully praying before they go to bed and paying their tithes to their local church. It's less worry for me, right? 
because I decided this was my mission and I was going to mind it. And so I just encourage you. Family, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mission worth minding. I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything else they want to share. Those are just some things that I felt were important to be diligent about. Yes. Oh, yes. Actually, thank you. Eggermeyer's, you can order it from CBD. It's my favorite. Little people's adult, I still use it when I teach Sunday school, or even when I'm looking for clarity. The illustrations are fabulous. If this is a hardcover, it's called Eggermeyer's Bible Storybook. Actually, I'm giving away three of them. If you can look on the bottom of your chair, there's three chairs that have a little piece of paper taped. as far as just Bible stories. Um, yes. The Hiding Place. That's a good book to read. It's about poor Teddy Boom and her life in the concentration camp and the importance of the Word of God, how she would hide the Word of God on her it's an incredible, very moving story. As an adult, you can read it too. Yeah, there's a lot of resources. I, I, I'm sorry that I can get back to you with some of the training books that I have. Okay, that I have read. You know, the Bible is you know the, the best training. If you could follow its principles and teach your children to live principle lives, that is your best bet. And just the everyday being present, I think is the greatest thing that you can do for your children. Um, and it takes time. And you know, it takes away from some things you might really want to do, but like I said, if you invest now, you're not going to have to worry as much later. So this is our favorite, the Edgar Myers is our favorite book.